Hi everybody! Welcome to Ask Susanna, December 15th, 2017. I'm going to answer two questions today, one about toothbrushing and the other about sleep training. Um, while these topics are quite specific, the concepts that I'll touch upon go well beyond the two cases. Uh, if you want to know more about enforcing boundaries or encouraging cooperation in your toddler, or if you want to know what you should consider before you're making changes to your routine, then this video will have some information for you. But first, I'm going to fire off a couple quick questions because I can't help myself. Uh, Lindsay Kovacevic, um, who asks about night weaning and bed sharing, I'd like to direct you to the guy when it comes to bed sharing advice, Jay Gordon, and I'm going to attach a link into the uh, video blurb, so check that out. Um, Tamara Herman, who's asked about uh, dental hygiene and the bedtime routine, a quick answer I can give you is to switch the order of event, ev pardon me, the order of events in your bedtime routine so that your son has his bottle before toothbrushing and no bottle when you're cuddling him up for bed. Um, give him a heads up on this change and then follow through with it consistently. Um, you might meet some resistance, he might get upset, but in which case you're going to acknowledge his feelings with kindness and empathy, um, let him express them, give him lots of affection, but then reinforce the new way of doing things, and he should get used to it in a few days. Okay, diving in to the big questions. Uh, the first is Sarah Allen, who asks, what is the ideal age to sleep train around bedtime? For context, I'm nursing my four-month-old to sleep at night currently. It works sometimes and doesn't others. Sleep, I sleep trained my oldest for independent bedtime around seven months out of frustration. I'm setting up pretty good nap habits with baby two, no nursing before nap, trying to put down a wake in crib, etc. But I would like to know when baby is old enough to soothe himself, learn to fall asleep, and resettle on his own. Great question. Um, now, depending on who you ask, Sleep training can start uh, anytime after four months or five months or six months. Some experts even say that you can go as early as three months, but that is on pretty the extreme end of early. And personally, it's something I would only recommend if your situation was really dire, like you really needed things to change and um, uh, you couldn't, uh, you just needed things to change right away. Um, so to determine when is a good time to start sleep training your baby, you need to take into consideration a few things. You need to look at where your baby is developmentally. Uh, if your baby is going through a leap, also known as a sleep regression, holding out on any changes, yeah, hold out on making any changes until after things have settled. To determine if your baby is heading towards a leap or in a leap right now, punch in your baby's due date into the calculator at the Wonder Weeks. Uh, the Wonder Weeks measures um, consistent developmental leaps in babies and can time with some precision when you can expect this sort of behavior. So um, that's something to, to consider with, with choosing a time for a sleep training. Um, another thing you want to look for is, is your baby ready for the change? Um, this, is, this is a one-size-fits-no-one situation. Um, because everyone is ready at a different age. Only you can really say when your baby is ready. You're the one who knows him the best. Um, so I can't give you a full answer, but if you're unsure about how to determine that, a good question to ask yourself is, have there been any recent changes to your baby's sleep? If so, then it might be a sign that your baby wants a change. So keep that in mind too. As for soothing and resettling, those are skills that you can, you can nurture starting at any age. Um, you can use a method called the hierarchy of soothing. Uh, following the hierarchy of soothing basically means slowly withdrawing the level of support that your baby requires to be settled, or the level of support that you offer him in order to settle him. So you slowly withdraw it and let him get used to a gradual uh, lessening in the amount of intervention you give him. Intervention meaning nursing, rocking, um, singing, that kind of thing. Um, and I'm posting an image again in the blurb below that kind of helps give you a guideline on what that means. 
Um, if you're not ready to start sleep training yet, then at this age, your best bet is to start developing a solid day-night schedule, including a relaxing bedtime routine and exactly what you're doing at nap time, getting him used to falling asleep in his crib um, and going, going to bed while still slightly awake. If you have any more questions about it, please shoot me a message and I'd be happy to talk to you about this. Okay, next up we have Q the Pirate from Instagram who seems excited. Hello, I'm finally here on time, yay! So my question is about a three-year-old and her teeth. I've been using your tactics to deal with delayed bedtimes and that's going pretty well. However, the thing that ends up causing the most fights is teeth brushing. Obviously we have to brush them, but she can throw all, she can throw out she can throw all out fits about it and refuse to. So what do I do? I've tried, we can't do anything else until you've brushed your teeth, which just leads to me sitting there for ages. And if you don't brush, then no stories, which I didn't like as soon as it came out of my mouth. So I guess what I'm asking is, um, what can I do when she's disrupting the bedtime routine with things that need to be done? Um, so, first of all, you're right to feel icky about the threat of removing the bedtime stories. When laying out consequences with children, it's really important to avoid using the threat of removing affection or bonding rituals as consequences. Because if you follow through with those consequences, then you're sending a pretty heartbreaking message to your child about the place that they hold in your heart. And if you don't follow through, then you're undermining yourself as the authority and this can cause undue insecurity in your child who needs to know that her parent has things under control. So either way, you're likely to start seeing an increase in power struggles and in unwanted behavior with these kinds of threats. So they don't work, they're no good. Good for you for recognizing it. Um, and I'm a big sub subscriber, pardon me, I'm a big subscriber to the philosophies of Alfred Adler, who says that we all, everyone, all humans, share the same basic needs to belong and to feel significant. Withholding affection as a method of behavioral management does not honor these needs. To belong, a children must know that no matter what, she's got a place in the family. Your love is not conditional upon any behavior from her. That does not mean that all behavior is acceptable, just that you will love her regardless of her behavior. In order to stop unwanted behavior without withholding love, you need to lay out different consequences. You need to communicate these clearly to her so she knows what to expect. You need to give her a chance to, to mull things over and to make a decision. And then you need to follow through with the consequences should she choose to, say, throw her toothbrush across the room and then run away screaming. To feel significant, your child must know that she has an important role in the family. She has responsibilities and duties, and that carrying them out makes her useful. If your child is not given a role, she will seek one out for herself. So she may have chosen resisting bedtime to get a rise out of mom as her role. In which case, she needs to be given a new role. So two things here. She needs to belong which means not removing any affection as a mode of control. Again, good on you for recognizing the ickiness of the story removal threat. And she needs to feel significant. In this case, she needs to be given a say about her bedtime routine, and she needs to be convinced that her cooperation helps the whole family and that her contributions are important. How you will go about communicating that depends on her personality, your family dynamics, and your personality, and a bunch of other things. So, and with, without working with you one-on-one, -on -one, I can't really help make any nuanced suggestions in that department. However, I know one thing that will almost certainly work, um, something that communicates both belonging and significance, and something that toddlers desperately need in order to feel secure, to know how to behave, to know their role, and to know that they are cared for, that they are important members of the family. And this is rules and structure. So, in your case, I'd suggest having a solid bedtime routine and one that she has some say in. Uh, do you want bubbles in your bath tonight? Which toothpaste do you want to use? What pajamas do you want to wear? Which story shall we read? This is the area of input that she can have. 
but you have to brush your teeth. This is non-negotiable. If children's teeth are allowed to rot, it can actually damage your adult teeth. So this has lifelong consequences. Good teeth, good dental hygiene in children, babies, and toddlers. The practice of daily toothbrushing and the feeling of a clean mouth should be normalized as soon as possible. Now, toothbrushing is really important and it's a topic for which I have very little patience in toddler tactics. You can call me a hard ass, but I like to employ a method that my mother pioneered called the hold. My mother is a retired dental hygienist and a loving hard ass herself. So I have found that this technique is both very practical and very effective. When you put your child in the hold, uh, you lay her on the ground and sit on her. You pin her arms to her side with your legs. You don't squash your child. The bulk of your weight is held up by your legs. You just use your body to enforce the rule, you must brush your teeth now. Like I said before, give your child a ch uh, chance to make a decision. The threat is not, if you don't let me brush your teeth, I won't read you a story. The threat is, if you don't let me brush your teeth, I'm going to put you in the hold. And then you give her a moment to decide, would you like me to brush your teeth here at the sink? Or would you like me to put you in the hold? Um, after realizing that you're serious and that the hold is not the most pleasant way to experience teeth brushing, your child will quickly start to cooperate. This cooperation should be recognized and rewarded. A kiss and a thank you or a quick acknowledgement of wasn't that nicer than the hold might be enough. You may also want to include the experience in a story with her stuffed animals or other imaginary characters so that she can learn the lesson outside of herself. Externalizing is a really effective tool for enforcing concepts with toddlers and incidentally with adults too. Uh, the hold is effective because it is a natural consequence. It's not a punishment and it shouldn't be used as a punishment. It's a consequence. Um, if you'd like to have some help with the nuance of your situation, I'd be happy to talk with you. So shoot me a message if you'd like and we can arrange a private talk. And I hope that helps. Until next week.